Hi everyone, this is Mr. P here. I miss you all. Thanks for joining me for uh, what I believe is lesson number 17 of the Black Freedom Struggle, where we'll focus on a civil rights campaign here in Philadelphia, the Gerard College desegregation campaign. Uh, I, I can't stress enough the uh, how great these videos here, parts one, two, and three of Cecil's People are uh, on YouTube. So check those videos out. You'll get interviews from leaders of the campaign um, and, and a lot of great archival video. Uh, all right, so let's... Um, Let's jump into it. All right, so uh, the conditions and background uh, here that I want to highlight, uh, Gerard College was founded in 1888 uh, after Stephen Gerard, the namesake, uh, died in 1831, and was founded on 40 acres of farmland north of Philadelphia. This was not yet part of Philadelphia. Um, it later becomes North Philadelphia. And it was established as a school for poor white male orphans with a 10-foot wall. These two features were according to the will of Stephen Gerard, who uh, was a slave-owning banker and the richest man in the U.S. at the time. And he uh, left about $7 million to establish um, uh, for the city to establish this school and it, for it to be run by the Board of City Trusts. Uh, so, which is a, a public board. Uh, and so th this school for up until, uh, n you know, 1967, uh, 68 is it, it only served, uh, white male, uh, orphans and later, f um, considered fatherless, uh, uh, if they had mothers, but their fathers were, you know, who had died in prison or missing, then that they could uh, be accepted into the school as well. Uh, it now it's much more expansive. Um, you know, girls are admitted into the school now as well. Uh, okay, so that's some of the background. Uh, it it does become incorporated into Philadelphia. Um, on this map, you can actually see it here, uh, and it it ends up becoming surrounded uh, by black neighborhoods, and so it's a, a all white boarding school for white male orphans. Not a university, college comes from a, a British English term, uh, yet it's surrounded by black neighborhoods So by the 1930s. So starting in the 40s, 50s, into the 60s is when these black neighborhood community members in these neighborhoods are like, well, why should we be excluded in the middle of the civil rights movement? Why should we be excluded from a school, from a, uh, you know, uh, when there are uh, children in, in their communities who could use this resource? Uh, so they challenged it. Um, I do want to um, highlight here that there's this great link here, which I'm going to open up, uh, and, and you should be able to see that uh, where you can actually look at the appraisal map, uh, and you can and you can play around with it. It's it's quite cool. Why is it not working? Um, it's it's quite cool here, and you can actually see. Um, Continue. I had to pause it. Uh, so now I have, you should be able to see uh, the map here. And so you'll notice here, Center City is here, West Philadelphia University City, West Philly over here, South Philly here. And you'll notice up here is Jar College. Uh, and this map is the 1934 appraisal map that uh, essentially is, you know, the redlining map of Philadelphia. Uh, if you watch the Chicago video, you'll know that during the uh, 1930s, the uh, Federal Housing Administration was established by the federal government to ensure, and part of one of their tasks was to ensure uh, mortgages uh, for banks. But they did not ensure mortgages uh, for uh, people of color and black folks in particular. As a result, the next 30 years, $2 billion of mortgages insured by the federal government uh, were not given to, uh, uh, were not given to uh, uh, black home buyers. Uh, and so they had to go to a, a whole bunch of other ways to be able to purchase homes, some of which were predatory. See the previous video on Chicago to learn more about that. Uh, but this essentially is a video, is a map that uh, appraises the different neighborhoods. And through this appraisal process, uh, banks were, um, you know, going to, you know, only give mortgages to people buying homes in certain neighborhoods. This created segregation in many of our cities or increased intensity of segregation in many of our cities. So Jura College ends up surrounding, you can see all the red is where um, uh, black communities were uh, restricted uh, from accessing. Blue, I believe was where, um, oh gosh, I would have to look at the key again. Uh, I believe that may have been referring to 
Jewish folks uh, and, and green referred to Italian and, and other white uh, ethnic communities. But anyway, the red refers to um, spaces that were restrictive for, for black folks. And uh, these spaces, people did not get access to mortgages for several decades. Uh, and Gerard College ends up surrounded by black neighborhoods. All right, so let's go back to the um, slides. Uh, and let's get back to presenting. Uh, so this creates a situation where during the middle of the civil rights movement, black folks are like, we want to have access for our children to this, this resource known as Gerard College. Uh, so early legal action to desegregate Gerard College was led by Raymond Pace Alexander, uh, who is a Central High School graduate, uh, and right in the midst of the Brown v. Board case, uh, he took Gerard College to court after six black boys were denied admission. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled that a man's prejudice are part of his liberty, and therefore Gerard College can segregate uh, and discriminate against black uh, students trying to apply. The Supreme Court reversed this decision uh, and ruled that the Gerard College uh, violated the 14th Amendment because it discriminated against black boys seeking admission uh, because it was publicly managed by the Board of City Trusts. Well, Gerard College is sneaky and they changed its management to private trustees, which allowed them to legally continue to prevent entrance to black boys. Uh, so Cecil B. Moore uh, here in Philadelphia, the namesake of Cecil B. Moore Avenue, uh, is somebody who was now president of the NAACP uh, branch in North Philadelphia and decided the legal activism is not enough. Let's pick it. Let's do in your face street politics. And so May 1st, the picketing began where they maintained uh, a, a line outside of Gerard College to, uh, you know, to make sure that they uh, dramatized uh, the issue of segregation that they weren't allowed. Uh, early on, some black folks did try to jump over the wall that with ladders, the police collected the ladders, arrested them. Um, several people were arrested. Uh, and, but a series of rallies, marches, and, and, and constant picketing for the, uh, these six and a half months, uh, ultimately brought the, the, the situation back into the court actually. But before we get into that, I, I want to highlight Cecil B. Moore's role. And he led uh, efforts to use this kind of in your street politics. Uh, he didn't want to rely on legal activism alone. He effectively brought in young people. He even negotiated a truce among local uh, uh, gangs, bringing them into uh, Pickett Gerard College. Uh, and so he was, you know, really seen as somebody who was a uh, really able to speak to so many different segments of society, able to speak to people in government, able to speak to people, you know, involved in, in local gangs, and able to really bring a lot of people to the table. Uh, in class, we will, and if you didn't get a chance to, I would listen to his speech um, starting at around 12 minutes, 30 seconds uh, for, for uh, several minutes um, on this archival video, where you really get a sense of how powerful of a speaker he was and how he didn't just kind of uh, blindly follow nonviolent strategy. He urged people to be nonviolent in their picketing and marching, but he said, if people are gonna hit him, he'll hit him back. And he kind of says that in the speech. So I, I, I would definitely watch it. And, and I, I think it's particularly compelling to consider the way in which he, um, uh, the, the way in which he's really able to bring um, young people into this movement. Uh, they're the ones who largely are uh, uh, manning the, uh, the, the picket line uh, at Gerard College. Uh, and victory is achieved in this campaign uh, with the support of the city and the state. They the campaign brings it back to the federal courts. They end the the picket uh, the picketing, and in December, uh, seven uh, black children were denied entrance. Uh, they are the ones who end up going to court for this, uh, and ultimately they win. They face a ton of resistance, uh, counter petitions from a coalition of private schools a whole host of resistance, uh, uh, you know, efforts to, to resist legally. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the federal courts rule in favor of the black students. And on September 11th in 1968, four black students uh, and one Asian student enter Gerard College uh, and, and are the five, and, and these five are the first students of color to uh, enter Gerard College. 
Charles Hicks uh, was the admitted a few months later, and he becomes the first black graduate. Uh, and Theodore Hicks, his brother, uh, and their mother was a leader in this campaign. Uh, Theodore Hicks is the first black valedictorian at Gerard College and graduates in 1977. I don't know who he is in this class, but he is in this uh, photo. Uh, at this time in 1977, you can notice that there are, you know, a, a handful, I think um, about a third, I would say, maybe, uh, of black students at the school. By the 1980s, it's about 50-50. Uh, and by the 1990s, it's a mostly black school. Uh, and this is due to white flight of the the of Jar College, right? So uh, once it integrated, uh, white families, uh, white boys no longer um, attended, and now it's uh, you know it's all genders and and all races are are, are are able to attend, but it is a vastly majority um, black school, which was not the intention of the camp of the uh, campaign efforts. Uh, so that's important to to consider here. Uh, so this is a summary of the, of the desegregation campaign. You can check that summary out. Uh, there were some things I didn't mention. In terms of support from U.S. Senator uh, Dr. King's visit to the picket line, um, and uh, uh, here in Philadelphia, Temple University students held rallies as as allies to the campaign. So there were a lot of uh, uh, supporters in this campaign as well. Uh, so that's our study of the Gerard College desegregation campaign. Definitely check out this video of Cecil B. Moore. Uh, it's really powerful, uh, and play around with these maps if you're interested. All right, uh, take care. Ciao.